Chapter 1, Lesson 6, Precalculus, continuing to look at graphical transformations. And in this video, we want to look at reflections across the axes. Now, we did look at reflections last year. Mostly, we looked at reflections over the x. But this year, we want to look at some reflections over the y as well. A reflection are simply two points or uh, graphs that are symmetric to some line in the uh, in the coordinate plane. Now we talked about when we were talking about inverses as those being reflections over the line y equals x. In this lesson we're going to look specifically at the x-axis and the y-axis. Now graphically what that means is each point on one side of the line has a mirror image that is exactly the same distance from the line we're looking at whether it be the x-axis or the y-axis. So algebraically, if you reflect something over the x-axis, then all the y values, or the new y values, are going to be the opposite of the y values of the function. So if you have the ordered pair xy, you're going to have the ordered pair x, and then the opposite of the y. When you reflect over the y-axis, you're going to have the, the new y values are going to be the same as the values of the negative x. So xy becomes negative xy. So the y value becomes, stays the same, but the x values are opposite when you reflect over y. And when you reflect over x, the y, uh, x values are the same, but the y values are opposites. So if we take a look at, let's take a look at this point xy. And if we were to reflect this over the y-axis, well, we notice that the distance from here to here is going to be the same as from here to here, like in a mirror. And the height, however, doesn't change because the y value up is going to stay the same, so only the distance has changed. And the distance from here to here, this x distance, is going to be the same this way. It's just going to be in the opposite direction. So when we reflect something over the y-axis, the x values are the opposite of what they used to be and the y values remain the same. When we reflect over the y x-axis, you'll notice that the distance from here to here is the same for both, but you'll notice that the distance here from y, excuse me, from up here to y and the distance here down to negative y are the same. The only difference is one goes down and one is up. So this would be a reflection over x and you'll notice the x values are the same but the y values are opposites. So we want to remember those two things. Now algebraically, how does this look? Basically what happens is when you reflect over the x-axis, the y values are all the opposites. No, the y values are all opposites, yes. So it gives the opposite function. So in order to do that, we place a negative sign in front of the entire function. So algebraically, when we reflect over the x-axis, we take the opposite of the entire function. That's going to give us the opposite y values, and that's what we want. So a negative sign in front of the entire function. So if I have the function f of x is equal to 3x plus 7, and I want to reflect it over the x-axis, I simply put a negative sign in front of it because I want to go from above the x-axis, where my y's are positive, to below the x-axis where my y's are negative. So all of the function values are going to be the opposite. So I put a negative sign in front of the entire function, reflecting it over the x-axis. So the reflected function would be negative 3x minus 7. Now if I want to reflect over y-axis, so the y-axis is the same. The y values remain the same, but the x values are opposite. So I want to take the opposite of every x value. So I'm going to substitute for every x, I'm going to substitute in negative x. So again, if we have f of x is equal to 3x plus 7, if I want to reflect it over y, the way to think about it is rather than going to the right that distance, I want to go to the left that distance, so the x distance needs to be the opposite, so I'm going to put in the negative x. So I put in negative x for every x value, so I'll have negative 3x plus 7. And that makes sense because, again, the y value doesn't change. So if I go up 7, I'm going to go up 7 after I go 3 times x this way, or up 7 whether I go 3 times x the other way. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples to show you how to do this. So here we have the absolute value of f of x 
no, excuse me, f of x is equal to 3 times the absolute value. So if I want to reflect it over the x-axis, I put a negative sign in front of the entire function. Okay, because I want all my y values to be the opposite. So I'm taking the opposite of the entire function. So that's going to be negative 3 times the absolute value of x plus 5. And if I want to reflect it over y, then the x values are going to be the opposite. So I'm going to substitute in negative x for each x value. So I'm going to get 3 times 5 minus x. And I just reverse the order there. So if I reflect it over the x-axis, it's going to be this value. If I reflect it over y, it's going to be this value. All right, let me do another one. Now this one's a little tricky, but not too bad. So if we reflect it over x, remember, if I'm above the x-axis, I want to reflect over that. So now I want to be below the x-axis. I want to take the opposite of all the y values. So I want to take the opposite of this entire function. Okay. Now I'm going to simplify this um, to cube root of x because the cube root of 8 is 2. So this would be reflected over the x-axis. If I want to reflect it over the y, I'm going to replace this x with negative x. Okay. So if we do some simplifying, oops, let me go back a step. So the cube root of 8 is 2, and then I have the cube root of negative x. Now, I can't take the cube root of x, but I can take the cube root of this negative 1. I could put a 1 there, and the cube root of a negative sign is a negative sign. So this would end up being the same thing. So actually, when I do this, I'm going to end up with the exact same function for both, whether I reflect it over x or whether I reflect it over y. Okay? Let me do one more. So we have 2 times the square root of x plus 3 minus 4. So if I want to reflect this over the x-axis, I need to put a negative sign. I want all of these positive y values to now be negative. And this whole thing does represent one positive y value. So I put a negative sign in front. Okay, and then I can distribute the negative sign. So this is going to be negative 2 square root of x plus 3 and then negative times a negative 4. So that's going to be plus 4. So that's going to be reflected over x. And then to reflect it over y, I simply replace every x with a negative x. So it's going to be 2 times the square root of, and then I'm going to change the order again just because we don't like to lead off with a negative. Negative x plus 3 minus 4. Okay, so that would be the uh, reflected over x and then reflected over y.